Well, good morning. We're not going to let you go back to sleep. You got to pull the lights up. So. It's good to see you guys today. It's good to be back with you guys. And uh, if you had the fun of COVID in the last two and a half years, I just want to say I decided to join the club last week and uh, just such a blessing to be part of you. Thanks for sharing. Anyway, I'm really glad to be back. I will say I was home last week and grumpy and people said that's because of COVID. My wife said that is not your excuse. So, now I do want to say something awesome because I didn't get to be here for it last week. We collected so far, I think there's still some coming in. They're not supposed to be, but they still are. Over 269 boxes so far. So, those will go all over the world. And uh, it's really cool. You can actually track your box now. Uh, um, that's kind of a neat thing to do. So, we're looking forward to seeing where our box ends up. I'll try to let you know when I find out. So today we're going to look at this idea of gratefulness and gratitude. And by the way, everybody, except for that child screaming in the back, everybody thinks... <laughs> Danielle, she's running out of the service. By the way, if you don't know, Danielle was one of my students, how many years ago now? 35? Long time ago. She was young, and I'm old now. So, um, but so she... <laughs> Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> and uh, how many kids are you guys up to now? 12? 13. Feels like 13, doesn't it? So my sister has 10, so it's not a competition, but there you go. <clears throat> so whenever I say that to people, they're like, what? How? And I'm like, mm. why? Yeah. So today we're going to talk about a story that's very familiar that you may or may not know. Um, but you probably have heard it or at least heard about it. And it's about how Jesus healed 10 lepers, but only one came back to say thank you. And um, one of the things that happens to us, not just in this season, it happens in this season, but it happens all the time, is we forget what's the most important thing. Years ago, we took Kyle to Brevard Zoo when it had first opened, and they had a playground, and we had never been there, and little baby Kyle comes there, and he's running around on the playground, and we're watching him, and all of a sudden, we have no idea where he went. Well, back then, what we didn't know was there were two entrances and two exits for the playground. Never a good idea, by the way. And suddenly, Kyle was gone, and we ran all around and could not find him. He had left and gone around the corner and freaked us out. But let me tell you, we looked until we found him. However, there's a Christmas movie that you've probably heard about. There's even a commercial about it today. They've made, they made like four different ones, but two of them were with the same kid. And uh, uh, this family uh, went to get ready for a vacation and left their kid home alone twice. And the first time, what happened? They got so busy packing and getting into the van and getting everything ready that they lost count. Yeah, it's your turn, Dad. That's how it works. We're proud of you. There you go. That's why Jesus said, bring those kids to me. Do you think when Jesus laid hands on them, they just passed out? Is that what you think happened? I don't know. It'd be cool when we see that story, give you a whole different perspective, right? They're bringing kids to Jesus. They're like, I don't want to be. <laughs> Suffer the little children to come unto me. You just don't know the context of that. Anyway, so, so what do they do? I thought you'd enjoy that. Um, so what do they do? They, they, all of a sudden, they get on the plane, and she yells, what name? Kevin, all of a sudden she realized she's not there. And then, of course, they do it again the next year. And once again, she yells Kevin. And now she's in a commercial with Kevin Hart where she looks at him and she yells. So even though they got all these things ready, they missed, listen, they missed the most important thing. Here's the deal. I don't want you to have Thanksgiving and forget to be thankful. Because here's the deal, listen. As much as it's about turkey, oh, there's some good turkey, some good ham. I look forward to the bread. If you're on a low-carb diet, I give you permission to stop for the week. I have no authority, but there you go. You can tell your wife that's why you'd quit. pastor told me I could eat whatever I want, so I am, right? So, so here's the deal, though. Whatever you're looking forward to, and you may even, you ready for this, your favorite dish 
could get ruined. I know, it's tragic. That happened in a Christmas story, right? By the way, if you want to feel old, watch the new Christmas story. You will feel really old. And so you go into Thanksgiving, and we, if we're not careful, get so busy preparing Thanksgiving, getting things ready, pulling the details together, something goes wrong, somebody says something, somebody does something, something happens, and if we're not careful, we will focus on the least important thing. Whoever you're around this Thanksgiving, and if you're having Thanksgiving alone, I encourage you, invite somebody over. Or invite yourself over. Just, you know, call me. Say, Pastor, I'm coming over. Okay. Whoever you're around, make sure that you don't make what you're doing more important than who you're doing it for. And when it comes to giving thanks, that's the most important thing in life. And the truth is we all forget it. We forget what really matters just because we get busy. We get busy doing stuff. We get focused on stuff. We focus on worry. And so I want to look at this story and maybe even tell you a few things that you thought and I even thought about this story. So we're going to pick up in Luke chapter 17, and we're going to talk about this idea of faith and actions and gratitude. So number one, we trust Christ by faith. So our lives are full when we trust Christ by faith. Luke 17 start, picks up in verse 11, and this chapter is full of different stories from different time periods. It's a great uh, chapter in the scripture. Here it is. Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Now, back in Luke chapter 5, Jesus healed one man with leprosy. And by the way, back then, leprosy was not necessarily leprosy. Sometimes any skin disease, any thing was called, they didn't always know. They didn't have uh, epidemiologists back in the time of Jesus, and they didn't always understand what was going on, and they didn't understand how you could even catch leprosy. So what did they do? They said, if you have leprosy, stay away from me. If you have leprosy, you stand across the street, and you say, you yell these words as you walk down the street, unclean, unclean, so that people don't get anywhere close to you. Wouldn't that be a great way to go through life? unclean, unclean, right? And so you can imagine the self-esteem of these guys. By the way, uh, I know teenagers who feel that way. I I was a youth pastor for years, and I can be honest with you, there were teenagers who felt like who they were yelled unclean all the time. You don't want to be around me. I don't matter. I'm not important. Some of you as adults may struggle with that still. So these guys stand across the street, stand across the way, and not only do they yell for Jesus, but here's what they yell. It's only mentioned two times in Scripture. They say, Master, which means commander, which, which means that Jesus, they knew Jesus was in charge. And if he wanted to, he could heal them. So they yell, have pity on us. They trusted Jesus. They knew who could heal them. Let me ask you a question. When you're struggling with worry, when you're struggling with frustration, maybe even as Thanksgiving's coming, you're already thinking of that person that you're going to get to see, the joy that you'll get to see that person, right? And so you're already thinking of that person. Maybe you're even preparing. Maybe you're even going through your mind. I'm not going to get triggered when they say these ridiculous things that they always say. I'm not going to let them pull me into this conversation that they always pull me into. I know they're probably going to wear that t-shirt that they know I hate, but I'm not even going to say anything, right? You start giving yourself a pep talk. You're all worried about it, freaked out about it. Or maybe it's something a doctor just told you. And here's the question. Who are you going to reach out to first? Is your first response going to be, can you believe they did that to somebody else? Is it going to be to try to justify your behavior or to make yourself feel better about, oh, well, I'm better than they are, see? Or is your first response going to be, Jesus, I need your help. Jesus, I need your help. Now, there's nothing wrong with asking somebody else for advice. There's nothing wrong with getting encouragement from somebody. There's nothing wrong with finding out if you're crazy or not. Maybe I'm the one. And sometimes your spouse will look at you and go, yes. (laughs) You're the... Am I the one who's crazy here? 
Absolutely. You're the one who's crazy here. I don't know if you've had that experience. If you haven't, you haven't been married long enough. <laughs> Am I the one who's crazy? Absolutely. You are wrong. <sighs> First, we say, Jesus, Master. God, I need your help. God, the doctor said this, and I don't know what this means. I'm going to trust you, but boy, am I worried. Lord, I'm scared. Lord, I'm frustrated. Lord, I, that person knows how to push all my buttons. Lord, would you help me? See, when we trust Jesus, the reason we can be full and be filled is because when we trust Christ, you know what it does? It takes the pressure off of us. You can't fix everything. Did you know it? And did you know you're not in charge of everything? Some of you in this room are going to ruin Thanksgiving dinner. Isn't that a wonderful thing for the pastor to say out loud? Why? Because everybody ruins something every Thanksgiving. Has anybody had, if, you, if you've got over three dishes, one of them you're going to do wrong. Oh, I've got to take my turkey out today. <laughs> so, <laughs> honey, if you watch this, can you remind me to do Okay. In Romans 8, it says this, and tell me if you relate to this. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. So all of nature is crying out for God. But then it continues. Not only so, but we ourselves have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. Basically, we know there's something better than this. By the way, the older you get, the older you get, the more you groan. I've had my kids say to me, what was that? And I'm like, what was what? They're like, that noise. And I'm like, I just stood up. <laughs> and I didn't know as I stood up, I went. I don't know when I became the abominable snowman in the Christmas movie, but you got to put one foot in front of the other. I know that. Right? And so we groan. And so we understand as we get older, there's something in us that says, oh, this can't be all there is. This can't be all there is. And so we groan for that adoption by God. And then it says this, for in this hope, and I'm going to go back to this word hope, so hang on to that. In this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not have, we wait for it patiently. And so some of you already have thought about your favorite dish. I did a, a bulk uh, uh, message to my family. Who's bringing what? And so one of them posted, I'm bringing squash casserole. Not a word, not a, not a comment. And then my other sister said, are you bringing your corn and bean casserole? Mmm, mmm, mmm. Because my sister can make a great casserole. It's just unbelievable. Just thinking about it, I, mmm. And some of you have a relative who brings something. Or maybe there's something you make and you only make it for Thanksgiving. And you're already like, oh. And I just say the words and your mouth right now is watering. You thought about it and you thought, oh. Right? And maybe if it's not something you make, maybe you're headed to Publix. I get it. That's okay. They got pie on sale, by the way. By the way, turkey, 49 cents a pound. Did you guys see that? You, we should all be eating turkey for like the next year. We should. I bought like a thousand pound turkey. All right. Anyway, so I'm going to get the oven and just. So this word for expectation is the same idea as you thinking about something you're going to eat. And it changes how you think. Because you're looking forward to it, you start to change your behavior. Some of you are already hungry for Thursday. What's your expectation of God working in your life? You know, the most popular hymn has to do with a song, basically a song just saying, this is what God did for me. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Basically, God, you looked at me. You knew that there was nothing redeemable. And yet you redeemed me. I am now your 
child. When we think ahead, we should begin to get that hope, even though we groan today. Oh! In John 10.10, 10, this is what the enemy tries to do to us. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I've come that they may have life and have it to the full. I don't know why we are surprised by chaos. I don't know why we're surprised that people are so easily fooled by fake things. I don't know why we're so surprised that why aren't people getting along better? Because this isn't heaven. And the whole creation is headed downhill. And we need that adoption as children of God. That's God calling. By the way, have you ever noticed there's always one more thing to do? I'm going to really freak you out. You ready? How many of you have a to-do list? I had a to-do list on a piece of paper. I lost the piece of paper. I wrote a new to-do list. And then I found the old to-do list. And they were different lists. Now, you ready to be freaked out? When you die, you will still have a to-do list. Can I mention this? It won't get done. So don't make the to-do list your goal. I want you to take a moment and just look around. Just look around. I know there's some weird people in here. Look around. Okay. Bob, good to see you. <clears throat> Did I say weird people and then say Bob at the same time? Sorry. Friends Unite. By the way, we're starting a new series next week called Ugly Christmas Sweater. So if you want to wear an ugly sweater next week, feel free. David, i got to get you to work on the Mr. Rogers intro for me. All right. It'll be a beautiful day. Anyway, so, so you're going to be around people this week. And as important as the food is, important as the stuff is, I want to encourage you to not forget that Thanksgiving... It's about, you ready for this? Giving thanks. You realize when it was instituted the first time, they had lost at least a third, if not half, of their family members. You realize when it was instituted by a president was during the biggest conflict in our country's history. And Abraham Lincoln said, we need to take time to give thanks. And so whatever you're going through today, I want to encourage you, give thanks. By the way, it'll change your life. If you feel like you're drowning in worry and fear and anger and frustration, take time to give thanks. Spend some time every day. Every day. When you go to have your quiet time, just think of three things you're thankful for before you start. Number two, so our lives are full and we trust Christ by faith. Number two, when our beliefs match our actions. One of my favorite stories is about an architect named Christopher Wren who built great cathedrals all over the world. And when he was building one of the cathedrals, the story goes that he decided to visit around lunchtime. And he went to, to visit the different people. And as he walked up on this first person, they were mixing mud in a wheelbarrow. And he said, what are you doing? And the guy was grumpy. He was, ah, I'm mixing mud. They had no idea that it was the architect of the building walking around. And then he found another guy who was laying brick on this beautiful cathedral. The guy was grumpy saying all kind of stuff. You know, construction workers have sailor language, if you didn't know that. And Christopher Wren said, what are you doing? He said, I'm laying brick. Came around to a third guy. This guy was doing, lifting all kind of things. He was uh, uh, hauling a wheelbarrow full of bricks, smile on his face, whistling. Christopher Wren stopped and said, what are you doing? He said, oh, I'm building a great cathedral. The difference was not in their task. The difference was when what they understood they were doing. Do you understand what you're doing? Are you just going through life? Are you just trying to make it? Are you just going over? By the way, there's always another speed bump. There's always another to-do list. There's always another hill to climb. There's always something else to accomplish. And one day you'll die before you get to one. And so in the meantime, make sure you know you're building a great cathedral. When Jesus saw this, he said to them, Luke 17, 14, go and show yourself to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. Now listen, I got to get a drink real quick. Look like a politician. In Luke 13 and Luke, uh, excuse me, in uh, uh, Leviticus, in Leviticus Luke 13 and Leviticus 14, it talks about these cleansing, cleansing rules. 
And one of them is when you're cleansed of leprosy, you go to make sure you're cleansed and show yourself to the priest. And so Jesus was basically saying, hey, go, your, go show yourself to the priest. And so he didn't offer, by the way, he didn't say you'll be healed. All he said was go show yourself to the priest. You know what's awesome? They did exactly what they were told. Why? They trusted Jesus. Are you doing what God's called you to do or is it too hard? See, they didn't know what was going to happen next, and you don't know what's going to happen next. But all you can do is do what's right every day. Are you going through a hard time right now and you don't know what's going to happen on the other end? Just do what's next. Are you going through something and you heard a bad report and you don't know what's going to happen a day or two or ten from now? Guess what? Today, do what's next. Do what's right. Do what God's called you to do. John F. Kennedy said this, After we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. Colossians 3 says this, Since then you've been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And then it says this, listen, Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is your life appears, then you will appear with him in glory. Thanksgiving, gratitude helps you to refocus your mind. If you find that you're falling into worry, you can't worry and be grateful at the same time. They won't fit in the same box. And so what do you do? Take some time to be grateful. Take some time to give thanks for what you have. Thank some time. Listen, when your car doesn't start in the morning and you find, oh, I can't believe this dumb, I've been wrestling with it. Lord, thank you that I even have the ability to sit in a car today. Lord, thank you that my house is air conditioned and heated. Right? When we lost power during the hurricane, I said to my mom, those poor people who get their power knocked out by the Russians, that's just mean. I hate Putin more now, right? It was the weirdest comment in my life. What happened? All of a sudden, I said, oh, I know what that feels like. Too often, we're so spoiled with how much we've been given that we don't recognize the gratitude that we should have. Because when the one thing doesn't work, you ever yell at your copy machine? You ever find yourself waiting for microwave popcorn? I wish this popcorn would hurry up. You ever go to your dryer and get frustrated that you had to turn it on again? Oh, just terrible the life you have. You ever mad because your internet's too slow? Oh. Gratitude changes that because you begin to recognize what you really do have. Somebody said to me one day, Eric, your kids are spoiled. And I said to them, you're right. As long as they're not spoiled rotten, it's okay. Because here's what I know about Americans. You're spoiled. You're sitting in an air-conditioned room on soft chairs, and I've had people complain to me that the chairs are too hard. You can sit on the floor. <laughs> Sorry, did I say that out loud? I meant to keep that one inside. You pray for me, Michelle. I need Jesus. How many of you have ever been bowling? Yeah, make sure you wash your hands. All right, so <laughs> I don't know about you, but every time I'm like, because I look at the other people bowling and I'm like, this is why they make hand sanitizer right here. Anyway, so I always like the guy who's spraying the shoes and had his face right near it. So when you go bowling, I bowled as a kid. My parents used to take me and drop me off at Bird Bowl in Miami. And uh, <laughs> my dad was really funny. <laughs> he, would, he would like warn me to not go anywhere or I would get killed. And then go, have a good day, and then drive off. <laughs> you stay in that bowling alley, you wander off, somebody's going to grab you and take you away like that one kid you heard about in Miami. So you better stay in there. Okay, see you later. <laughs> and somehow I was safe in the Bird Bowl. So we took bowling lessons, and here's what we discovered with bowling. When you roll the ball, it's too late. You better make sure everything leading to that is right. Because if you do some goofy thing as you're walking down, that ball is going gutter every time. But if you do everything right, you, you might get it right. 
The truth is, listen, when your attitude is wrong, everything that follows goes wrong. Did you hear me? When your attitude is wrong, everything that follows is wrong. But when your attitude is right, when you're grateful and thankful, yeah, sometimes there's going to be some gutters anyway. But guess what? You're not going to get a strike if you're not doing something right. And if you are always ungrateful, frustrated, angry, worried, irritated, if you're already thinking of that person coming over on Thursday and you're aggravated already, gutter. Maybe start to give thanks. Say, God, I know you're going to take care of this. God, I know you're going to help me to make better decisions. You're going to help me to say what's right and not say what's right or wrong. I want to encourage you every morning, practice praise and thanksgiving. Listen, you could be the best bowler in the world, know all the techniques and still get a gutter. But you will never get a strike if you don't do anything right. So even though there may be days that you have gutter days and you do and say the wrong thing, if you'll start out with thanksgiving and praise every day, you'll at least get lined up right. You may still mess it up. <laughs> you, you may still roll it the wrong way. But if you start out with praise and thanksgiving, you at least give yourself a chance for God to work in your life and to help you to do what's right every day. Our lives are full when we trust Christ by faith, when our beliefs match our actions. Number three, when we take time for gratitude. Luke 17, 15, and 16. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. And then it continues. Forgive me for not putting it in the notes. I blame COVID. Here it is. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go, your faith has made you well. Can I tell you that if I had never read this story, this is what my mind would have said. If somebody said, what did Jesus say to the guy who didn't go all the way to the priest but came back? My mind would say, what are you doing here? I told you to go show yourself to the priest. Because I'm a doer. So I think life's about doing. So, so I tend to be the one who's in the kitchen working, saying, why aren't these other people working? And yet, what does Jesus do? He rewards the one who stops what they're doing to give thanks. There's a theme about that. I'm Mr. Logistics. Kristen calls me Mr. Logistics, which is wonderful. So, so... I have learned how to go different places. If we go to Orlando and go different places, I know how to get into an arena with 30,000 people and get out on time. And I was watching the TV the other day and saw this commercial where the, the progressive commercial where they said, don't become like your parents. And the guy pulled into the parking lot and they park on the edge of the parking lot. And the first guy says to him, hey, that's smart that you parked away so we can leave right after. And the guy says, don't talk about leaving before we even get there. And I went, oh no. You're becoming your parents. You know how many times I've sat in an event, and before the event, which I'm enjoying, Trans-Siberian Orchestra a couple years ago, I'm enjoying the event, and I'm thinking, and how am I getting out of here? I bet you if we run to the car, we can beat all these people home. Miss the whole concert. Because i got to figure out how to get out. You ever do that? Some of you are going to do that on Thanksgiving. You're going to miss the fun of everybody with you because your casserole didn't do what it was supposed to do. I can't believe it. Did. You know how I know that? Because that's what I do. Do the same thing. Get focused on the dumbest thing in the room. Well, I told Bill to bring the casserole. He didn't bring the casserole, so I bought, we both brought green beans. I can't believe we both brought green beans. We're all going to eat green beans and don't get any squash. Whatever the dumb thing is, we get focused on it, and what? We miss the event. Don't miss being grateful because of what's going on around you. Romans 8, 37, knowing all these things, we're more than conquerors through him who loved us. 
For I'm convinced that neither death or life or angels or demons or the present or the future or the powers or heights or depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Do you realize how many things are in that one passage that you and I can be thankful for? But Eric, I'm depressed. This deals with that. You're not separated. He's with you. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're dealing with right now, whatever has happened to you in your life, he has not left you. You're more than a conqueror. You're not a victim. So not only what happens this week, but what happens every day, God, thank you for what you've given me. God, thank you that I can breathe today. In Colossians 3.17, I said this to the kids, whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Now, I want to tell you why I told the kids about water. I grew up in Miami. Miami has some of the best water in the world. Did you know that? If you didn't know that, now you know. I had well water in Miami, best water in the world. Absolutely true. I grew up with fresh water all the time, every day. No big deal. I grab water now out of my tap, don't think a thing about it, I got a filter and drink it. When I was in the hospital, I had gone months without eating a few years ago. And then the doctor came in, he said, you can no longer drink. Then he came in and said, not only can you no longer drink, you can no longer have ice. Then he came in and said, not only can you not have ice, you can't have that little wet thing to put on your lips. No water at all. I started dreaming about water. I dreamed that I went into a 7-Eleven and robbed them of Gatorade. That's true. I told my doctor that. A few days later, the doctor said, you can have some water, but just drink it really slowly. Can I tell you how I drank the water? Mm. Oh. Now, when's the last time you drank water that way? One of the reasons that we're not grateful and thankful, you ready? It's because we have so much that we've taken it for granted. Let's have gratitude this time of year. Let's give God thanks for all that we've been given, for all that we have. God, you've given us so much. Yes, we have things we can complain about. Didn't the pilgrims? And yet we've been given so much. Let's give thanks. If you'll do that, I promise it'll change you. You might even bowl some strikes. You might even do some things right. You might even say the right thing to that relative that you don't like. You never know what God might do when you really value what he's given you and you say thanks. If you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you can do that today. The Bible says now is today is the day of salvation. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So if you want to surrender your life to him today, knowing that he died and rose again, you can do that today. I'd love to talk to you about what it means to be a Christian. Maybe here today as you're a Christian, you realize you've been focused on worry and frustration and everything except for gratitude. Hey, it's okay. It's a new day. Time to bowl a strike. Let's change who we are today. Let's change our gratitude, our gratefulness. Would you join me as we close in prayer? Father, thank you for this time today. Thank you for all these wonderful people here. Lord, I thank you for all that you're doing in our midst. We want to give you thanks Lord, we've been given so much. If we're honest, we sometimes take it for granted. So, Lord, especially this season, we want to say thank you for all you've done for us. Thank you for who you are. Thank you that you love us. In Jesus' name, amen.